Here's an example. The question is, have transit travel times to the university significantly decreased since building the tracks? So here we have a sample of five observations. And these, for these five observations, these are, say, locations in the city. We know how long it, it took to get to the university by public transit before tracks was built and after tracks was built. So in our example, say, this is going to be um, y, and this is going to be x. OK? What we are going to do is build a new variable, d. And this new variable, d, is going to be y minus x. Uh, sorry, x minus y. So the order in which we take this difference matters only with respect to the directionality of our null hypothesis. So if we want to know, has the, uh, have the times decreased? OK, so basically we're asking, is x less than y? So if we create our variable as x minus y, this is equal to d, then really what we're going to be looking for is, is lambda, is delta, is delta negative, is delta less than 0? Because if delta is less than 0, well, that means that um, this x, uh, the travel time after tracks, is going to be less than the travel time before tracks. And therefore, this d should be below 0. It should be a negative number. So the null hypothesis in this case is that delta equals 0. And the alternative hypothesis is that delta is less than 0. That difference is negative. In other words, the travel times have decreased. We're going to use a, uh, well, that was step one. Step two, what test are we using? We're using a matched pairs t-test. Matched pairs t-test. And this is going to have n minus 1 degrees of freedom. In this case, our n is 5. So we're going to have 4 degrees of freedom. So it's going to be a t-test with 4 degrees of freedom. Our alpha was 5%. So if we draw out this curve, we're going to have a left tail test. And we're going to have 5% over there. So if we use our table, we've got 4 degrees of freedom. And we need to have 5% in the tail. So we're going to use the 90% column, because that's going to split 5 and 5 in each tail. And we have a, 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 a critical value of 2.13. And of course, it has to be negative. OK, that was step four. Now, in step five, we need to calculate the statistic. And to do that, we're going to use a data table. So here's our table. Remember we said that this was going to be x, and this was going to be y, and di is x minus y. So all we have to do here is fill in the differences of x minus y. So we have minus 2 minus 3, 0, minus 3, and minus 5. And now we're going to take this different statistic, and we're going to square it. 4, 9, 0, 9, 25. All right. So here's, some, here's something that will help you think about how to solve this problem, or why we're doing what we're doing. All we've done is we, we've created this new statistic, the DI. And remember, the di is used to estimate, uh, sorry, the d bar, the d bar, is, which is the mean of the di's, is used to estimate delta, the population difference. So the sample difference and the population difference. So really, all we're going to do now is conduct a one sample difference of means test using this new variable d as our variable. So Remember, 
In a one sample difference of means test, we had t equals x bar minus mu h over the standard error of the mean. Now, in this case, what we are going to have is t equals d bar, so that's our new variable, d bar, minus the hypothesized difference, which in our case is zero, divided by the standard error of, of the matched difference of means. Okay? So that's just SD. This thing over here is S sub D, the standard deviation of the D variable, divided by root N, which is the sample size, five. Okay, so now we can compute the standard deviation of this distance variable. We can do it in the normal way, but let's use this equation instead, which is the shortcut equation. The sum of di squared is the sum of this column over here, which is 47. So we have 47, and now we need to have the sum of di all squared. So that's the sum of this column, and after we've added the column up, we're going to square it. Whoopsies, so... So the sum of this column is minus 13, and now we're going to square it. So 169 over 5. All over n minus 1. Right, so all over 4, and the square root is of the entire fraction. This is equal to the square root of 13.2 over 4, which equals 1.82. Next we need to calculate the standard error of the difference. So the standard error of the difference is the standard deviation divided by root n, which is equal to 1.82 over root 5. And that equals 0 0.81. Okay, now we have everything that we need to compute our t-statistic. The t-statistic involves d-bar. Actually, we haven't computed d-bar yet, but d-bar is the mean of the di's. So it equals sum of di over n, which equals minus 13 over 4. Uh, sorry, minus 13 over 5. So I'm going to go back to where I have more room and calculate the t statistic. So this is now step five. t, so this is the test, the t test is going to equal d bar minus the null hypothesized difference, which is this over here, zero, divided by the standard error of the differences, which is minus 13 over five, minus zero, divided by 0 0.81, which equals minus 3.21. So where is this t-statistic on our chart? Is it in the zone of acceptance, less extreme than the critical, or is it in the zone of rejection? Well, minus 3.21 is going to be out over here, since this is zero, this is minus two, here's minus 3.21. So this is in the zone of rejection. So in 6, we have to reject the null. So, so travel times are now different, or travel times are different